Great, so I'd like to talk about the different white blood cells that we have in our body. We've talked about red blood cells, but we haven't really talked about white blood cells. These are also known as leukocytes. So there's a couple of different types of white blood cells. The first type that we're gonna talk about are called neutrophils. N-E-U-T-R-O-P-H-I-L-S, okay, S. All right, and these neutrophils, um, they look kind of like this. They're a little bit bigger than red blood cells. They've got a diameter of about 10 to 12 micrometers. They've got this really weird multi-lobed nucleus, all right? So you'll have this nucleus with a bunch of different lobes in it. And um, what these guys like to do is that they like to eat bacteria, okay? So they will, once they find a bacterium that shouldn't be in our body, they'll engulf it through phagocytosis. They'll distort their cell membranes, capture it, They'll capture those bacteria in a vesicle, which is a little sphere of cell membranes inside the, uh, the cell itself. Then once they have captured the, that bacteria, they will um, inject digestive enzymes into that vesicle in an attempt to, to digest it and kill it. If that doesn't work, these neutrophils will do what's called a, a respiratory burst. That's when they are able to synthesize bleach and hydrogen peroxide, and they expose the bacteria to those chemicals, which usually kills it. You might be thinking, like, well, how can a bacteria ever survive a neutrophil? Why do we even have bacterial infections? Well, that's because bacteria, if they're able to hide from the neutrophils, if they can avoid detection, then the neutrophils are useless against them. And that's what a lot of bacteria do. Um, next up, we've got eosinophils. These are about the same size as neutrophils, maybe a little bit bigger, like 10 to 14 micrometers in diameter. Um, they look kind of like this. They have a bilobed nucleus. So they have a nucleus with two little lobes to it. Kind of looks like that. And they'll have all these little granules, these little inner parts of the cell. Kind of maybe some little granules in there. What these guys like to do is these guys love, or they don't love, they hate parasites. And that is their job, is to protect the body against parasites. Um, if we have like a hookworm infection or even an infection of a protist, these isonophils will attack that protist, they'll gather around it. A lot of times um, these, these parasites or protists are too large to engulf, so these isonophils will gather around that parasite and, um, and kind of inject or secrete digestive enzymes onto that parasite in an attempt to destroy it. Okay. These are much less numerous than neutrophils. Neutrophils are, are very numerous. Uh, about 50 to 70% of all white blood cells are neutrophils. Um, about 1 to 3% of um, white blood cells are isonophils. Next up, we have basophils. These are about the same size as these guys, 10 to 14 micrometers in diameter. They've got a also a kind of a bilobed nucleus, but these guys are pretty dark in coloration, all right, so they're going to sting in darker, so we'll draw them as purple due to the presence of numerous granules inside them. These guys are not very uh, numerous at all, um, less than a percent of all white blood cells for these basophils. Their job is to release histamines, and histamines are tiny chemicals that initiate the inflammatory response, okay, so these are very crucial in our uh, inflammatory response. Next, we have lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are a little bit smaller. They're about 5 to 10 micrometers in diameter, so I'll draw them about that size, a little bit smaller. And um, they're characterized by having a really large spherical nucleus. Kind of looks like that. All right, so they have this kind of large spherical nucleus. And there's two types of lymphocytes. We've got T cells and B cells. T cells specialize in attacking and killing um, both bacteria and viruses, where B cells, they specialize in producing antibodies, which are chemicals that disrupt the ability for bacteria and viruses to live, as we'll talk about later in the immune system. Um, they're quite numerous, so about a third of all white blood cells are lymphocytes, and T cells, they kill. B cells, they produce antibodies. Lastly, we have monocytes. These are our largest white blood cell. They're up to 20, about 20 micrometers in diameter or more. Okay, so they're about that big. They have a really large kind of a kidney-shaped nucleus. Kind of looks like that. These guys, once they leave 
the bone marrow and enter the tissues, they become macrophages, which are these very powerful uh, phagocytic cells that eat everything from bacteria to you know, bits of old cell pieces that shouldn't be there. Okay. Finally, we have platelets. Platelets are actually little fragments of cells. They're, they stain purple, they're tiny, they're like two micrometers in diameter, and these float around the bloodstream and they help in the blood or the cardiovascular system's ability to heal itself. Okay. So the deal with this is, let's take a blood vessel as an example. Okay. Now the inside of that blood vessel is going to be lined with simple squamous epithelium. And that's where I'll draw here in pink. Okay. All right, so this pink line is simple squamous epithelium. This black line, what that shows, that's kind of the wall of the vessel itself, and it's got collagen in it. Now, platelets will stick readily to collagen. They love sticking to collagen. But when they're floating through a vessel that's not damaged, they have no access to that collagen. However, if there was an injury, let's say there's an injury in this vessel right about here, all right, so let's say there's an injury, okay, the vessel was cut, that's going to cause a lot of this collagen to be, to expose itself into the vessel itself, or expose itself inside the vessel. Drop, drop your markers here. All right. What that will cause is it causes these platelets, they're going to run into this collagen and they're going to stick to it. Once these platelets stick to the collagen, they're going to release stimulating factors like serotonin. That's going to attract more platelets to this site. In addition, the platelets get very sticky. So we're going to have a collection of platelets that just attach to this break in the vessel. All right. As more and more uh, platelets respond and stick to each other, this little initial clot is going to be reinforced with a protein called fibrin. This fibrin reinforces this network of platelets and now we have a true clot that is able to plug this vessel and it prevents any blood, vessel, any blood from escaping.